I decided to do a review of my Torval Urban Carrier backpack. There don't seem to be a lot of independent reviews out there. The few that I could find were, you know, basically a link to on Torval's website and just wanted to give folks a chance to see, you know, just a normal person using theirs uh, in the field and how they like it. So I decided to do my own review and we'll see how it goes. I'm enjoying it so far. It seems to fit my needs. It's a little um, expensive for what I wanted here in my FPV journey, but I think it will last me a long time and it will do everything that I need it to do. So let's go ahead and get to it. So this is basically most of my FPV setup. Um, my Avada, my Rotor Riot Skyliner 3, uh, my FPV Remote Controller 2, and the DJI Goggles 2. So not a ton of stuff, um, you know, trying to keep kind of things consolidated into as few uh, systems as I can for now. Maybe I'll branch out eventually later, um, but this is what we have. So we've got our quads here. Of course, we've got now our quite obligatory uh, cable to connect the goggles to my phone when flying the Avada. Um, it's a huge pain, um, but again, it is what it is. Um, we make it work. So the Torval has sort of an over flap um, that flips over and it reveals, um, you've got two side zippers that zip all the way up. And then basically one big flap uh, that comes down to reveal the area that you have to work with. So we got some propeller storage. It's where we keep our propellers. I probably have more than I will ever need, but they are cheap, so who cares? There's a few pockets here. We've got the front pocket here that's just sort of for things like uh, my cable for my DJI goggles. There's also an interior sort of pocket here, and then there's a Velcro closed pocket uh, over here. And this is where I've been putting um, my spare battery for my DJI goggles. And then you have this piece, which actually Velcros. Um, there's a laptop sleeve. This piece Velcros to uh, the laptop sleeve, so you can kind of move that around as you need. Um, but obviously this is meant to be the storage for um, your goggles and your controller. So we'll get that all loaded up and then we'll keep going. Okay, so we have our FPV controller. We've got our goggles too. They actually fit in there really nicely. Um, I think if you had a, a bigger controller, um, it would be pretty difficult um, to fit in here with a decent sized pair of goggles. Um, but for, at least for the FP, uh, DJI FPV system, everything fits in there um, pretty nice. It's easy to get in and get out. Um, and this is basically set up right out of the box. So, um, you know, you unwrap it and you can pretty much get started. I didn't have to configure any of this at all, um, which was pretty, pretty helpful. So the next thing for me is uh, batteries. I did not buy the uh, Torval uh, LiPo bag. Um, I think it was like 40 bucks or something like that. I don't know, but um, this bag from Rotorite is basically very similar um, and does the same thing. So honestly, I just don't see the need to uh, spend any more money um, than this bag. You might think that the benefit of getting a Torval bag would be that it's sized uh, to fit in the backpack. Um, but again, this is honestly where this particular bag really shines is it basically fits in there absolutely perfect. It sits nice and flush um, with this top piece so it doesn't take up any more room than it needs to. And then that leaves 
just the right amount of room for my tool bag. Since I don't use my tool bag very often, um, I actually keep that in the back and then keep the lipos um, in the front. Um, but again, this all fits um, really nice. And then uh, we have our Avada batteries. So you can check out the other video I did sort of showing this little hack that I kind of stumbled upon. Maybe this is like pretty well known, I don't know. Um, but basically the uh, chart, the four charger pack um, and four batteries fit perfectly in this little GoPro case um, that came with my 11. I actually have two of these because I lost one of my GoPros on my bike. So now I have a spare package. And that actually fits really nicely just right in front there. Um, so we can fold this flap over and it's not taking up any uh, excess space. So then I have my GoPro, which has its own case, uh, again, since I have two of them. And then there's still room to just go ahead and stack those. Um, and then that closes right up. And then another feature of this that's kind of nice um, is it's got this side pocket right here um, that opens up and that can give you access to, um, at least for me, where I keep the batteries. So I can pull my batteries out and that way you don't actually have to take off your quads um, to get this open because um, as you'll see in a little bit, once you have a quad on here, um, because these straps go over the front, you can't actually um, open this up all the way to take stuff out without taking your quad off. So it's a lot easier um, if for some reason you wanna get into the main body of the pack first without taking your quad off, you can just open this compartment and pull, um, pull these out. Um, so that's a, a really nice little feature. So on the front, um, basically you have these three straps. You've got two that are grouped pretty closely up here and then a third one down here. And these are kind of nice because they lock. So you can flip this open and then make your adjustments here um, and then close it and uh, things aren't gonna move. And then these are a little bit stretchy. So you can get things pretty snug and um, without putting too much pressure uh, on the frame of your quad. And so um, that's pretty nice. And then you don't have to worry about um, this, uh, this strap slipping at all um, because you have that lock there. So let's go ahead and uh, get the quad mounted. I don't know if there's an exact right way or an exact wrong way to do this, but um, the way I do it is I just loop the strap over here and that way it's uh, being supported by the GoPro mount. This is like not super tight, it's just snug. Um, but I can't imagine a scenario where this is gonna um, slip under sort of normal usage. And if it does kind of slip, um, then it's gonna, the motors are gonna help support that. And then down here, um, I just ran it under the frame arm uh, and then over um, the battery pad and then back under. So again, even if, you know, even if it kind of slips from up here, it's still, um, gonna catch here so I don't know I think it should be fine I'm not like doing any crazy hikes or anything like that with this at least not yet um, so I feel this would be pretty uh, pretty secure um, but again because these straps go across you can't open this flap to get into the body of the pack um, unless you use uh, the little side door here. So that makes, again, makes that pretty handy. Um, but everything stays up um, pretty secure. Um, the zippers and stuff seem pretty nice. These straps um, all seem pretty nice, pretty high quality. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine that for what I would be doing, that I would be putting a lot of wear and tear on this. So I'm not super worried about that. Um, 
but you know, it's nice to know that it seems pretty, uh, pretty quality. And then, um, you know, you've got like a water bottle, uh, netting over there. Um, and then, um, I think this is, uh, some Molly over here. I don't really have, um, any reason to do that. I do have some like Molly, um, packs, but again, it's not really anything that I need to mount to this particular backpack, but it's nice to know that it's there. Um, if I wanted to add like my Molly water bottle holder or some other pack, like if you wanted to mount, um, your battery over here, I think the one advantage of the Torval system, their lipo bag is that it does have Molly straps. Um, uh, but again, for me, you know, usually I'm just doing sort of day trips, so I don't need to pack a lot of stuff in here. So just putting the batteries in the main part of the backpack works for me. Now let's get the Avada on there. So this has a top um, clasp up here. Um, they can tighten down um, and that fits really nicely through um, the Avada frame. If you left the battery on there and tried to run this over, um, it's a little short for that. So you do need to carry this uh, I haven't really done a lot of testing to see the different configurations, but this seemed to be the most feasible way um, to carry the Avada uh, up here. Because again, this strap is a little bit short, um, but it should fit over, like it would probably fit over this. I just haven't tried it just because since this is a bigger quad, um, it doesn't really fit up here. But honestly, the Avada fits just absolutely perfect um, up on the top here. So once you have that all mounted up, this flap comes over and closes, and then there's another clasp here. It's a little tricky when the other quad's on there, but that just closes right up. It's nice and secure. Um, yeah, you barely even know that the Avada is there. So once you get it all loaded up, um, you know, everything fits decent enough um, if you're just throwing it in the car or even if you're um, going to go for a hike. I mean, there's nothing on here that's going to come loose or anything like that. So um, it all packs up pretty nice. Um, it's a decent size backpack. As you can see, you know, I've got a five inch quad on here. Um, you know, it's taller than kind of your typical backpack, but if you do photography, um, you know, I would say it's probably about the size of like your normal kind of camera, um, backpack. I don't know. I'm too lazy to measure it, but it's probably about 24 inches or so, um, tall. And then, um, you know, with a quad on there, you're probably looking at, you know, 12, 14 inches um, deep. Nothing crazy, um, but not exactly uh, super compact. So one other thing I will show you is, well, you can't get into the main body um, of the backpack. Um, if you set it on its side, um, you can see that it's, you know, it's not tiny. Um, but what you can do is you still can um, open it up and access everything. Just to give you an idea of the size, um, here we have our 14 inch laptop. So I guess it's actually probably not 24 inches, maybe it's like 18 inches tall. Um, then here you can see it on top there. So there we have our laptop in there. It's got plenty of room below it. Um, as you can see, it has pretty decent clearance. So I don't see why you wouldn't be able to fit a 15 inch laptop. Once you get everything in there, it starts to get a little bit snug. So if you have a pretty thick laptop, then, uh, you know, it might be a little bit snug. Um, this is my gaming laptop that I also use for video. So it's probably not something that I'd be carrying around with me in the field. I carry, t tend to carry on my um, MacBook Air, um, which would obviously 
fit in here a lot easier um, than this uh, 14 incher does. So yeah, that's just about it, um, at least for the first impression. Um, I've taken it out into the field once so far um, for some flying. I thought it worked great, um, but we'll do a little bit more testing with it um, and I'll provide an update a little bit further down the line just to see how things are holding up, uh, making sure that it actually is sort of fitting my needs. Um, but so far, um, I'm pretty pleased with it and uh, look forward to actually putting some scuffs and some dirt on it um, as we get out and do some more flying as the weather gets better.